Howdy again everyone, and let's get straight in to testing the living daylight out of a brand new Nikon camera, one that everyone's getting pretty excited about, the Z6 Mark III. This is the first time I've handled any Z6 Nikon camera, and I already know from testing their ZF camera that Nikon's 24 megapixel sensors are very good, so I'm pretty excited. The headline feature here is that the camera's 24 megapixel full frame image stabilized sensor is partially stacked which means it can work faster than a normal camera sensor without costing too much more. In fact, it's over three times faster than a sensor on a Z6 Mark II. The final frontier for mirrorless cameras today lies in getting their sensor speeds up, I believe, for better video work, faster burst rate, less lag when shooting wildlife or sports, and improved electronic shutter picture quality. A faster sensor also helps with the autofocus and subject detection systems. The sensor won't be up to the same speeds as the Nikon Z8 or Z9, and certainly not Sony's global shutter sensor on their A9 Mark III, but still, it's a very handy improvement and gives a big boost to the camera's overall speed. It opens up the possibility of internally recording 6K raw video footage at up to 60 frames per second, something only the Panasonic GH7 can match at this price point. It also features 4K recording at up to 120 frames per second and 1080p footage at 240 frames per second. So it's potentially an excellent camera for all kinds of video work too. And when it comes to stills, this camera has an impressive burst rate of 14 frames per second with the mechanical shutter. With the electronic shutter though, it can handle 20 frames per second with RAW, 60 frames per second JPEG only, and up to 120 frames per second if you're willing to drop down to 10 megapixels of resolution in DX crop mode. All of those options still have autofocus, and the raw images stay at 14-bit quality, which is a truly excellent specification for a camera in this class. The flash sync speed is 1 200th of a second in mechanical shutter mode, and 1 60th of a second in electronic shutter mode. All of this for US$2,500 or £2,700 here in the UK. That sounds like a good deal to me. I'd like to thank Nikon UK for loaning me this new camera for a couple of weeks for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. Let's check out its build quality first, and Nikon aren't presenting us with anything revolutionary here, thank goodness. The camera will feel instantly recognisable to any Nikon shooter, although anyone migrating from another camera system may be surprised by just how many customizable buttons there are here. You'll definitely want to spend a little time setting controls up the way you like them, and getting used to placing your fingers differently. As a professional camera, we get the usual autofocus joystick and AF on buttons and switches for just about everything. It's all highly customizable. The playback button has been moved to the bottom right though, which did catch me off guard. The camera weighs 760 grams, and it's nicely smaller and lighter than the bigger Z8, but a little bigger than Nikon's earlier Z6 and Z7 cameras. But hey, at least it fits better into the hand that way. Well, my hands anyway. Nikon advertise it as being a well weather sealed camera also. The lens is very bright and high resolution, and it flips out, which really is incredibly useful for video work, and especially vlogging. I didn't really like the way it flips out though. You can't quickly do it with your left thumb from the bottom. You have to reach around and open it out, which it does with a very firm click to it, which is a little bit annoying. The electronic viewfinder though, my gosh, it's probably the best I've ever worked with. It's big and high resolution with a huge dynamic range, fast at 120 frames per second, and it's unbelievably bright, up to about 4000 nits. You'll actually want to turn its brightness down when you're shooting in darker situations. There's very little lag to it too, which will be very useful when shooting sports or wildlife. The input-output ports at the side are well tailored for video work especially, featuring 3.5mm microphone and headphone jacks, a USB-C port for charging and connectivity, and it's very nice to see a full-sized rugged HDMI port here. Canon, are you listening? When it comes to storage, the camera features two memory card slots in my favourite combination, CF Express or XQD on one side, SD cards on the other, CF Express for speed, 
SD for affordability and compatibility. The battery is one of Nikon's powerful EN-EL15Cs, which offered plenty of shooting time for me, a couple of hours of video work, or about 600 still shots. The camera's autofocus is absolutely excellent. It draws from Nikon's pro-level 3D tracking system, which is a first for a Z6 camera. It has loads of subject detection features, fast and sticky autofocus, accurate shooting in stills mode or in video. Honestly, I couldn't notice a difference between this and the Z8, although dedicated sports photographers may spot some speed differences. The autofocus on this camera truly is a blast though, and it can even autofocus in the dark at about minus 10 EV if you're using an f1.2 lens, which is really astonishing. The camera also features up to 8 stops of in-body image stabilization, and that does an absolutely excellent job here as well, as you can see, when shooting stills or video. More on the video stabilization a bit later. So the camera, as you can tell, is packed with features, especially for video work, and its weather-sealed body is utterly professional, with a standout viewfinder in particular, and tons of customizable controls. The only thing I didn't like so much was how the flip-out screen handled, but again, that's something you just get used to. So let's look at image quality. We'll start by looking at RAW versus JPEG, and here we can see that RAW images are astonishingly detailed. The JPEG images, here with just a touch of sharpening, are just a little softer, but still very convincing. If we look at the brown wall behind the singers here, we can see a lovely smooth colour graduation out of the camera's JPEG engine. Colours look lovely and natural here, with quite bold greens and a warm feel to them. Let's look at higher ISO noise levels now. All the way up to ISO 800, image quality remains excellent, although at ISO 1600, we're starting to miss out on a little fine detail. The problem gets a little worse at ISO 3200 and 6400, although they are still quite usable images. ISO 12800, though, looks really quite rough here. And for anyone interested, here are ISO 25600 and 51200, which, as usual, aren't really usable at all. So, the Z6 Mark III's high ISO image quality is perfectly fine, although no better than competing cameras like the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. The pictures are lovely and sharp at lower ISO levels though, and at higher ISOs, noise reduction makes the image look pleasant, but it is rather destructive to finer details. The camera also features a 96 megapixel pixel shift mode, but I can't stand those things. Even if you're using a tripod, those modes don't often work too well, and you have to stitch them together on your computer using Nikon's NX Studio software, something else I really dislike doing. Something that's been quickly publicised about this camera is that its faster sensor speed has had an effect on dynamic range, and unfortunately my tests bear that out. Dynamic range here is below average, unfortunately, and shadows look especially rough when pulled up from raw files, even lossless raw files, so that is a genuine disappointment. Let's move on and look at video quality then, starting with 6K at 60 frames per second. That 6K footage is fantastically detailed, with nothing really in the way of artefacts or aliasing. Noise only begins to creep in the shadows at about ISO 800, although even 1600 is looking clean enough. ISO 3200 is getting a bit noisy, though, and at ISO 6400 and beyond, we're losing a lot of detail, too, with ISO 12800 looking particularly bad. What if we flip down from 60 frames per second to 25? There seems to be just a minuscule improvement here, nothing substantial. Something else I'll mention is that the camera suffered no noticeable overheating in my tests, even when shooting in 6K, although I was shooting here in Wales during the summertime, which unfortunately is still pretty cold. Still reassuring, you could shoot for hours at 6K, potentially. Let's take a look at the 4K footage quality now. Firstly, at 60 frames per second, despite the lower resolution, that 4K footage is still looking very detailed. Noise levels up to ISO 1600 look perhaps just marginally lower than at 6K. There's no real difference here, to be honest. And it's the same at higher ISOs too. ISO 3200 and 6400 are noisy but usable. ISO 12800, well, too rough here. And again, what if we flip down from 60 frames per second to 25? ISO 3200 and 6400 are looking just a little better. 
So it's an averagely good performance for high ISO shooting here, nothing special, but neither are there any issues. The camera's footage is lovely and detailed though, and it's good to see the camera performing as well at 60 frames per second as it does at lower speeds. Let's look at some higher frame rate footage now, firstly 4K at 120 frames per second, and yes, this looks excellent, much better than that on my old Canon EOS R5, much sharper. Zoom in, and we still get plenty of detail. Something to mention though is that this footage has a DX crop to it, it's not full frame. And here's the 1080p footage at 240 frames per second, which again looks fantastic. This is some of the sharpest 1080p footage I've ever seen, even without shooting at such a high frame rate. So this really is an excellent camera for high speed shooting, one of the best I've tested so far, aided no doubt by the camera's faster sensor. Oh, and the crop at 1080p is only small, using about 95% of the camera's sensor. On that very topic, something else I should mention is that the camera shoots video at various levels of cropping. 1080p footage, as I've mentioned, is barely cropped at all at higher frame rate, although there is a crop from 60 frames per second or slower. 4K footage also gets cropped a bit, and if you shoot at 100 frames per second or faster, that crop gets worse down to a DX level. 6K raw footage though, or 5.4K non-raw footage, doesn't suffer from a crop at all. I hope that all makes sense. Let's take a look at rolling shutter. At 6K, no matter what frame rate you shoot at, some rolling shutter is visible but it's way lower than usual. The faster sensor is definitely having a great effect here. It's also visible in 4K footage, again, to the same level whatever frame rate you shoot at. To get rid of it almost altogether, shoot at 1080p. Even at 240 frames per second, there's no real rolling shutter here. So that's another very impressive performance, much better than a Canon EOS R6 Mark II that I recently recently tested out. And finally, let's look at image stabilization when shooting video with heavy movement. Here's some footage without any image stabilization. Here's footage with the camera's sensor stabilization or VR in normal mode, still very shaky here. Here's some footage with VR in sports mode, still looking about the same. And finally, here's some footage with electronic stabilization as well, which applies a crop to your footage and only works in shooting modes that already have a little crop to them, like 4K. However, it does do a surprisingly good job of smoothing out your footage here. Okay, well, that's about it for my tests. As you can tell, I was deeply impressed by the Z6 Mark III because of the power of that faster sensor. It really makes itself felt in so many ways, not least the great autofocus, burst rates, and excellent high speed video footage, and low rolling shutter. This kind of thing really is the future, and everything else that we all know and love about Nikon's professional cameras is packed in here too. It's a wonderful experience to use, and captures amazing stills and video footage with ease. The only real red flag about this camera is its dynamic range. Pulling up the shadows on your raw images could get a little unpleasant, but not totally disastrously so. One workaround for this would be to shoot with high dynamic range bracketing turned on, but obviously that's not so suitable for moving subjects. Also, the camera's high ISO image and video quality is no better than competing cameras from up to two years ago, but still, by all means, it's very good, and raw files in particular are packed with fine detail, or at least the most detail you can get out of a 24 megapixel sensor. You are getting a lot of camera for your money here, especially for sports and wildlife photographers and video makers. If you can live with its dynamic range, the camera comes highly recommended without a moment's hesitation, and it's great to see Nikon continuing to invest in new technologies and really push their boundaries. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found that video helpful, I didn't cover everything about the camera but I wanted some brevity in there as well. These free and sponsorship free videos take a huge amount of time to put together, especially the camera reviews, so if you find yourself watching them regularly then take a look in the description below for my Patreon page. My Patreon supporters do an amazing job in keeping this channel trucking on, and they get all kinds of exclusive bonus content and early access to some of my more interesting reviews, so check it out and ciao for now everyone.